My dad's truck was just stolen while I was trying to sell it. Guy literally just drove off with it. Today, let's talk about what happened and see if I can provide some tips on how not to get screwed when selling a car, because I just did. So yesterday completely sucked. I've been trying to sell my dad's old truck. It's a 2001 Toyota Tacoma. You might remember that I've done a video with this truck in the past. You can click above to see that. It's got low miles for the year, only 149,000. It's a bit rusty because it came from the East Coast. My dad had it shipped out here when he moved from the East Coast. But even so, Toyota Tacoma prices are pretty high up there. I actually listed it for $9,500. I know I wasn't going to get $9,500, but I figured I could probably get like six or seven thousand dollars for this truck even with a bit of rust that's how crazy the prices are on these he owned it for the last 18 years he took great care of it i have all the records it had its frame replaced under warranty by toyota when they all rusted out back in the 2000s so i listed it on craigslist facebook marketplace and offer up and i showed it to a few people i actually turned down an offer of six thousand dollars just before this whole incident happened and i kind of wish i hadn't done that and I had like 50 or 60 people interested, so it was tough keeping track of everybody that wanted to come take a look at this car. Later that day, another guy wanted to take a look at it. He wanted to meet up after dinner. I said that was fine. So I met him at a supermarket parking lot. I don't meet anybody here at home when I'm selling a car. So I figured that would be a good place to go. The guy was really late. It was starting to get dark. He texted me and said his Uber was late. Then the guy walked up, we chatted about the truck for a long time. He had some anecdotes about owning a Toyota Tacoma in the past and he wanted another one for work. He didn't really care much about the rust, which I thought was odd, but you know, who knows? I don't really know what people want in vehicles. He looked over the truck for about 10, 15 minutes, actually did a pretty in-depth inspection of the vehicle. He asked if he could test out the clutch because he said he was worried about it needing to be replaced. I let him start up the truck and check out the clutch travel and I gave him permission to test out the clutch in the parking lot. I was outside the truck and before I knew it, he just straight up took off. Yep, he just drove off with the truck. He yelled out something like, I need to try to get it into third gear. And then, uh, yeah, he just drove away and exited the parking lot and never came back. Awesome, right? This sucks. So normally I'd take a photo of a potential buyer's license before I let them even get in the truck, but I didn't this time since I thought he wasn't going to drive it. I thought he was just gonna test out the clutch. But yeah, he texted me after 10 minutes and said he was returning, but obviously he wasn't going to return. I tried calling him and yep, the phone was disconnected. I'm pretty sure he was using a burner phone. Sometimes I go on test drives with potential buyers, sometimes I don't. And I didn't really think this was a test drive. I thought he was just going to test out the clutch, but I'm glad that I didn't go with him because I'm guessing he was gonna steal the truck no matter what. I'm just glad that I didn't have to get forced out of the car at gunpoint or anything like that. So let's go over my mistakes because yeah, obviously I made a few mistakes here. And let's see if we can spot some red flags. In retrospect, I took note of some peculiarities, but I just tend to be a very trusting person, so I'm willing to give pretty much anybody the benefit of the doubt, which probably isn't the greatest thing when you're trying to sell something that's worth a lot of money. So these right here are my new rules for selling a car, or really selling anything where you need to meet up with total strangers. So new rule number one, this may sound obvious, but don't meet in the evening or at night. I agreed to meet this guy while it was still daylight, but he was really late and it got dark by the time the guy showed up. So you should really just meet in the morning or early afternoon. And once this guy was late, I should have just said, screw you, I'm going home. Number two, don't meet alone. Even if it's inconvenient, bring a friend or family member along. If I had someone else with me, he might have thought twice about trying to pull something. Number three, consider meeting at a safe trading space like in front of a police station where there are cameras and the potential thief might think twice about doing anything shady. Number four, before a test drive, take a photo of the person's driver license and take a photo of them. If they don't like it, they can go buy a different vehicle. Now it's very possible that this guy may have had a fake license, so taking a photo of it may not have helped, but if I had taken a photo of him, he probably wouldn't have stolen the car. All right, now let's talk about red flags. So my wife and I were talking about the book, The Gift of Fear, which has themes about making sure you trust your instincts and intuition. Oftentimes you notice something, but then immediately disregard it for whatever reason, or it's something that you register in your subconscious, but it doesn't immediately bubble up to the surface. For me, in retrospect, there were a few red flags and some intuition that I ignored, probably because I'm just very trusting of people. And like I said, I always give people the benefit of the doubt. And sometimes in certain situations, it's probably better to be keenly aware of your instincts. So here are some red flags that I subconsciously noticed but didn't act on. Red flag number one, the guy said he was arriving in an Uber, but I never actually saw an Uber arrive. He was about 20 minutes late and I didn't see which car he hopped out of. 
In the moment, I thought it was odd that I didn't see where you came from, but I immediately disregarded it because I've gone to see cars and Ubers before and maybe I just missed it. But in retrospect, I'm sure he was there with an accomplice and they probably arrived before I did. Red flag number two, he completely disregarded the rust on the truck. Everybody else who looked at the truck spent a lot of time inspecting the rust because most people in California are not used to seeing that much rust. He said he just needed it for work and he didn't really care, but I did think it was strange that he was the only person that didn't care about the rust. Red flag number three, he had a very nervous energy. I'm not sure if he was on drugs, but in retrospect, he was way less chill than the other people who looked at the car. He was likely a bit nervous because he was probably trying to figure out how to steal my truck. I noticed it at the time, but I just disregarded my intuition. My subconscious was telling me something was off about this guy, but I just kept giving him the benefit of the doubt. So sometimes you have intuition or instincts that you immediately disregard without much thought. I don't think it's healthy to be skeptical every second of your life. That would would probably be pretty toxic, but certain situations should require it, I think. I'd say anytime you're selling a big ticket item to a total stranger is one of those situations. All right, so how will I sell cars in the future? I'm definitely gonna follow all of my new rules and make it a point to look out for red flags and always trust my instincts. But honestly, this has kind of soured me on meeting people to sell cars for a while. I think I might end up just selling cars on eBay, or bring a trailer or I actually don't have to talk to anybody in person. So what are your rules for selling a car? Have you ever been burned by a Craigslist scammer? Let me know in the comments below. I think that's gonna be it for today. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash hello road or buy a t-shirt at helloroad.tv shop. I hope you're well and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.